Welcome back to my independent off grid retreat. One of the things, in my opinion, of being part of the off grid slash self reliant lifestyle is the ability to be able to sustain yourself, of course. So, food is one thing, being able to build things for yourself is another thing, but we all have to have a little bit of enjoyment in our lives also. Now, I picked up a hobby which fulfills the desire for me to have something to do, and we're all adults here, and we all, I'm sure, uh, at one time or another have enjoyed a little tipsy bevy. So, like, about three years ago, I got into alcohol making. Um, behind me, I have a five-gallon pail of uh, sugar wash that I've already made and has finished, and today I'm going to steal it off. So, if you're interested in that kind of content, stay tuned. Like, subscribe, and share. Let's get her done. So, up until recently, I've been using a pretty old-school and really cheap method of doing my spirits with a pot still. This is my old pot still. Uh, you put your wash inside there, stick it on the stove. There's another pot that sits on top of here and the steam that comes out of this, this pot goes through a tube into the bottom of the pot on top. You run water, circulate water through the bottom of the pot on the top and the steam goes through a coil inside there and then comes out and the condensed steam that comes out the top is alcohol. Well, the other day, on a Black Friday sale, I decided to step up my game. And I got a Turbo 500 stainless steel condenser. And I got a Grandfather pot, which I'm going to be able to use to not only make spirit, but also make beer. So, I'm pretty pumped, and today's my first day getting to try it. So, I'll get it all set up, put it all together. So, Still Spirits has a really great selection of options that you can mix with your distillate after you reduce it, of course, to 40% ABV from like 80 or 90. Uh, you got <clears throat> cinnamon whiskey, which is like Fireball, and you got to mix it with the sugar package. Cafe Lua, which is like Kahlua, Blue Caraco, Black Sambuca, Irish Cream goes with the cream packet. You've got gin, rum, vodka, Jamaican rum, rye whiskey. And then these classic ones are a little bit, supposed to be a little bit more tasty. A gold rum whiskey, dark rum rum. There, and there's like so many more. I don't even think this is half the selection. I got uh, flavoring for making a raspberry vodka. It's, the options are just endless. Uh, so, cool, make, make awesome Christmas present. Uh, I'm going to use the blue Caraco in the liquor base A, and I'm gonna make my buddy's wife, she likes those like blue motorcycle drinks. I'm gonna make her some blue Caraco for a little bit of a present. Present. She just, it was just her birthday not too long ago, so this should be a cool gift for her. Uh, one of the most important things when you're doing alcohol making is cleanliness. You got to make sure that all of the stuff that comes in contact with your wash and the the process is clean. So I have this product here called Star Sand. It's like 500 milliliters takes like 12 drops of this little jug. This is going to last me like my lifetime. And you just wet everything down with it after you've given it a rinse. Then you wet it down with this, the spray, shake off the excess, and you're done. That's it, it's sanitized. So I'll, I'll get everything sanitized, everything clean, and uh, get everything together. And uh, when I'm ready to take my first measurement on my wash to see where we're at, then uh, I'll come back at you. So this here was a pretty quick wash. I put uh, six kilograms of sugar and then 5.5 gallons of water and some nutrients and yeast. Um, mixed it up and it only sat for about four days. So I'm gonna need two hands to get this lid off. And this here is a proof and trail 
hydrometer. You fill this container up with the liquid, spin it in there, and it'll show you it'll float at, it doesn't want to focus. There's your proofreading, and then it has your alcohol percentage reading as well. And uh, it'll tell you where your, what level your, uh, your uh, liquid is at. So this is a proof and trail hydrometer. You use that after you've done your uh, alcohol making two times. You use it to measure what your wash is at, and then you use it again after you've stilled your product to see what percentage you're at. It touts on the box that this thing is supposed to be able to put out 96% alcohol, 96.7% alcohol as its optimum production. But uh, I'm fairly certain that uh, we're going to probably get more around 90, well, 90% alcohol. <laughs> You'd want to be drinking that. You So that's what the proof and trail thermometer helped, or hydrometer helps you uh, reduce that spirit down from that high percentage pure alcohol to 40, 35, 50% or so. And then uh, when you mix it with whatever other flavorings you add to it, it comes down to a consumable level. So I'm going to get the lid off that uh, bubbler and or fermenter and uh, we'll take my first measurement. If I had to describe it, I would say that it smells like wine, a little bit like wine. Um, let's uh, let's take a dip here and see what we got for percentage. Well, the hydrometer's floating, that's a good sign. I give this thing a little spin. Let it get settled. Oh, there's a sticker right there. Oh yeah, it's okay, so we're close. I would read that about 16%. You guys probably can't see it. There's the proof, so that's 25% or so, 30%. Proof is double percentage. You can see there, there's the 20 line coming around. I would say we're about 16% alcohol. So that's not stilling, not doing anything special, just sitting it in a pot for four days and letting it bubble, letting the yeast eat the... Yeast eat sugar, the byproduct of CO2, and methane. Uh, methane. Methanol, not methane. During the process of this video, I said multiple times that the product that I'm looking for is methanol. That's not the case. The guidelines for alcohol consumption require that there's one one thousandth of a part of methanol in alcohol. Alcohol is ethanol. Not, met not methanol. So I'm sorry for that. I haven't done this in about a year. We moved and I'm just getting back into it with this new setup. So I got my terms mixed up. I apologize for that. And I just wanted to make sure I let you guys know. I didn't want to drink methane. <laughs> anyway, the byproduct is alcohol. So, uh, what's next? We got our measurement. We got to get our wash transferred into our pot. So, I'll get set up and get that done. So this right here is the siphon tube. I'm just cleaning it with my sanitization equipment. Or liquid, I mean. This was like really cheap. It was only like 10 bucks on Amazon or something like that. So that's it, all clean. Just need to give it a shake, get off the excess. 
Now this goes in here like that. Cycle it like this to get the siphon started and it comes out here and goes through the hose down into the pot. So something that came with my still was these little ceramic chunks. Up until now, every time I've stilled, I've always had almost like a burnt uh, sugar flavor that would come into my spirit because of the pot sitting on the element and then burning the, I guess, remaining sugar that was on the bottom of the pot. And that would come somehow out in the spirit flavor. So those uh, little ceramic balls are supposed to help stop that from happening. So I used a clearing solution to clear my wash. So maybe like from here down, I've got like a murky yeasty yuckiness. So I use a siphon to kind of keep above that. And that's why I'm not using the spigot to change the, uh, transfer the liquid into the pot. I want to keep as much of that yucky yeast out of the pot so it doesn't give off flavors okay so there's the watch all transferred into the green father and we're got a temperature of 19 degrees and you'll see i was able to get down to pretty well just the yeast left and you can see it in there is just kind of a goopy cocky yuck. I don't want to put that into my, my uh, wash. Cause off flavors with it. That's disgusting. So that'll dump. Uh, when you do a spirit run, there's three sections that you can clearly identify. The beginning, which is called the heads. The middle, which is the hearts, and the hearts has the best flavor, and then the tails. So the heads also contain all of the bad stuff that you guys may have heard rumors about, like uh, stuff that'll make you go blind and all that kind of stuff. Um, so what you do is when you start your still, your first roughly six to ten ounces of spirit that you get off all that bad stuff has a lower boiling point than the ethanol so what you do is that first six to ten ounces you just throw it out and then after a little bit further you still have some not so great flavors and then you finish the heads and then you come into the hearts so when you're into the hearts and you want to keep all that and that's what you use for your alcohol and then as that continues on and the alcohol content in the watch goes down and down and down you start getting into the tails and the tails is also just off flavors it's all drinkable but it doesn't add a positive influence to your final product but when i run my still i always keep the tails and there's still alcohol in it. So keep the tails, I put it in to increase the alcohol content of my current wash, and that allows me to uh, just get a little bit more spirit and keep on the keep the process going. So if I had to, this is from my pot still, and just describing the, the smell you get off that, this has been, this is straight, so this is probably I don't know, maybe 70% alcohol. And it's probably, I can, I can smell that burnt sugar. And I know the flavor is in there too with that. Yeah, yeah, it's just, I don't know. So um, I'm gonna put it in because the amount compared to the five gallons that I got in there is not gonna carry a flavor through, but it's going to increase the alcohol content slightly, which will give me a little bit more product in the long run. And then this is the remainder of what I have of one of my last spirit runs. This is hearts that's been reduced. 
there, th that smell is not there as much. It just smells like pure, clean, like vodka. It, much nicer. But uh, this had that burnt sugar flavor in it too. So I'm gonna put this in and just do it as well. Okay. So what happens with this process is the water boils and the steam starts to come up and come into the bottom of the column. This column from here to here roughly is full of stainless steel rings and then from here to here it has copper rings and copper helps keep positive flavors coming. So this is called a reflex condenser. What reflux? Did I say flex? Reflux con condenser. So as that steam comes up these steel pieces that are in this column start to, they're colder. So the steam condenses on those and then the, the, the liquid falls back down. But as the temperature comes up, the, the still, the, the column, then before they get back down into the wash, they'll re-evaporate. And that process, that reflux process of coming up and down and up and down and up and down continues to happen until the vapor at the, the top is nice, pure, clean, good tasting alcohol. That steam comes up, comes through this black piece here, and then comes back down the center of this condenser and comes out this tube here. This will be the condensed alcohol. What I need to do is I need to hook my supply water, which is cold water, to here. Now this tube will take the water around the outside of this of the steam. This is a two-part tube, this one here. So the water, the cold water will come in here, the coldest port, point being on the bottom, and as it slowly comes up, it'll, it'll warm up. And by the time it comes through this tube, this tube is almost too hot to touch. Because we're talking about almost, almost 100 degrees, right? Boiling point of water, 100 degrees. This part here will be like 80, uh, maybe 75, 74. Uh, all the bad flavors evaporate, if I'm not mistaken, they evaporate below 68. And then your positive uh, methanol vapor is between 68 and 76. And then anything above that, you're starting to increase your water content until you get to the boiling point of water. This is all in degrees Celsius. So this here is the thermometer, which gives me the ability to measure the temperature of the water coming out. And that way I know this. So it comes out of this outside of this tube, goes through here, and then there's just a little bit of a coil here. And then the straight pipe comes down and it comes out here and, and out here. So, <laughs> Measuring the water temperature here, what's coming out of here will tell me if I have that 70 to 76 degree temperature water. Okay, so that's probably going to take around 45 minutes to heat the temperature. It's a 1500 watt heater. Well, I'll let it do its thing. Currently, it's at 20 degrees. So, so hey guys, it's about a half an hour in. I thought I would. Show you. I switched everything to Fahrenheit so my American friends will be able to see things better and understand the temperatures. So there's a 60.1 in the column or off the water. The water is off and down on the unit it is 99 degrees Fahrenheit. So about halfway to boiling point. We'll give her another half hour and uh, once the spirit starts flowing, I'll show you guys what it's all about. So one of the things that you have to keep in mind when you're running a scale, obviously the gas that comes off of this liquid is explosive. So you're supposed to do such a process in a well-ventilated spot. I have the window cracked and I run the hood fan on my uh, hood fan microwave 
on max. And that should give enough airflow to vent anything that may be coming into the space. It's an 1800 square foot house, so it's going to take a lot of gas to blow it up in here. So, I got my measuring cup ready to take off the first. Uh, I think I'll take off three ounces. It said in the book I'm supposed to take off an ounce and a half. I know I said six to ten. I'll take off the first three. That'll be, uh, let, me, let me get the paper and I'll tell you what, exactly what it is that's in there. So it says the first uh, 50 milliliters or 1.7 US fluid ounces that come out of the still contains the lighter molecules, lighter than alcohol and water. And it's, uh, you'll have to excuse my non-scientific pronunciations here. Uh, acet, acet, acetaldehyde, ethyl acetate, methanol propanol. So those are the main contributing things that would people talk about uh, people going blind from using a still and drinking the alcohol. Those are the poisons that are going to come out of the wash that are generated as a normal process in the uh, production or creation of alcohol from the yeast interacting with the sugar. So. Measuring cup, I'll strip those off once those are out. Uh, I know the rest is good. I'll just take uh, a taste every now and then. Uh, one, another important thing when you're running a scale, if I'm putting out 95% alcohol, I don't want to be taking drinks. So I just put a little bit of a drip on my finger, shake the excess off and give it a taste to see the flavor profile where I am. Then that, that lets me decide when to start collecting and keeping to be able to use and when to stop collecting and use that portion for the amount that I keep to use on the next run as I did in the beginning there with that mason jar. So they say uh, five hours to uh, still off uh, five gallons of liquid and it comes out at uh, 95% and when you reduce that to 40% with water uh, then you have uh, about a gallon of liquid of 40% alcohol that you can do with whatever you like. And the options for that are endless. Uh, so I've got a gallon jug here and uh, sometimes what I'll do is, well not sometimes what I'll do, I've never done this, but I've seen videos where guys will, will fill this and then you can buy uh, chunks of oak or just make chunks of oak. The bought stuff has probably been sterilized or at least uh, kiln dry and then you char it yeah, I think you can even buy them already charred and then you'll put those in here and steep it like a tea maybe put a vanilla bean or a chunk of cinnamon and uh, steep it and like a tea and then you can get uh, some of those flavors that you'd get like in a rum so it's uh, quite an interesting process uh, I enjoy doing it and uh, once we get to a point where we're actually making some alcohol uh, I'll show you guys. So I don't know if you guys can see this from back there, but the temperature is slowly starting to go up. It's hovered around 74, 75, 76, and now 81.3, it's gone up and up and up steadily. 81.5, it's going up 81.9. So now the gas or the vapor is starting to come up the call this is oh too hot to touch here but up here it's only warm up here it's still cold i can touch it up here so the vapor is we're at 177 degrees in the water and the vapor is starting to come up the column but as i mentioned before as it comes up the column and interacts with the cold rings then it condenses and drops back down and it's going to start to do this and as it comes through the column eventually it comes to the top and comes out nice pure clean alcohol so it's continuing to rise once i get to uh 
122 degrees Fahrenheit is the minimum temperature of the water coming out of the condenser for you to be able to start making or condensing liquid to come out. So we're a ways from that yet, and the water's not flowing, so that has to be flowing water. You're supposed to flow the water at 3.5 ounces per minute. So I've got uh, my measuring tool here. I'll put a timer on and time it for a minute and see how much I get to get the right flow of water. So 180 degrees, coming up uh, to almost boiling. Let's, uh, let's get back to her when we start flowing some alcohol. Okay, so we just passed 120 to 122 and we're going, we're starting to go up pretty fast. I can feel the heat here now, not quite here yet. So that gas is starting to simmer. The water is starting to simmer and the gases are starting to be pushed up the, the column. So that coil that's in there of this uh, condensing water is being heated up by the temperature of the rings and coming coming back down to this spot here. So I'm gonna start the water flow now. Just I'm gonna put it on a trickle. So look how fast that's coming down, 104, 100, that's, that's coming down too fast. So now I have almost a steady stream of water and that's going up really fast. So I'll put a little bit more. Now I have a steady stream of water. This is a needle valve that I have on my tap here. It allows me to control the water flow. 150, 152, 153. There we go. So now we're starting to come down again. 145, 140, 136, 127. 124, 122. So we're back down below. Now, now that's forcing this column to reflux. And I want that. When you see a jug from the old days of uh, alcohol from guys who used to moonshine and it has three X's on it, those three X's are an indication of triple distilled. They would use a pot still, not a column still. And they would. First they would do a spirit run. So they'd, they'd run the still fairly quickly to get the alcohol out of the wash. And then they would still it two more times to continue to purify and get the flavors out that they want. So 128, 129, we're starting to raise back up again, even though I still have the same water flow. So again, I'll open the water a little bit more. Cause I would like to stay in the beginning stages of this process I would like to stay around 122. In the beginning, I want to stay low with temperature because in the beginning, I want to make sure that I'm getting those uh, bad vapors on the four shots, which are uh, acetaldehyde, ethanol acetate, and methanol propyl propanol. Those are the stuff that'll make you go blind. It's really bad for you. So I'm gonna take up, the, excuse me, <coughs> I'm going to take off the first four ounces of liquid, throw that right in the garbage. That's the four shots, the stuff that you don't want to eat or drink. But if I keep the temperature of the water coming out of the still around 122 for those beginning 122 to 125, if I can keep it at that in the beginning, then I know that those first four ounces that I'm collecting are only those vapors because alcohol doesn't condense at that point or vaporize at that point quite yet. So I just timed a flow measurement of the water that I'm running and for, uh, in one minute I collected just over 400 milliliters of water which is just about 16 ounces, just less than 16 ounces. There's the flow rate of the water. Not very much is coming out of there. And we're at 124 degrees. So any moment now, I should start to see some steam and some liquid drips starting to collect in the hose here. 
and uh, we're still sitting. It's been hovering at 190 on the on the temperature of the water of the boiler for maybe five minutes now. That I've noticed we've started condensing. It's drip, little drip, little drip, little drip. So that's that's alcohol coming out of there. Well, it's alcohol combined with those other bad things. So we're back well down below 122. So the action in this column right now is just going up and down. I can probably barely touch it anymore now up here. No, it's it's hot. So we'll let her keep going. And eventually I hope that I'm gonna get a stream out of here. I don't know, this is a new experience for me, so I'm a little excited. Okay guys, sorry about the uh, beeping in the background. The plow was cleaning our parking lot. It uh, snowed last night here. So probably for 15, 20 minutes, we've been sitting around 190, 191. As you can see, I have the temperature that it's supposed to go to as set to a boiling point of water. The column has gone up to 142.5. I choked back the water a bit to allow it to remain over 122 and it's continued to go up. And the still is producing slowly. You'll notice how it drips slowly and then it should give a little run of quick drips like that. So that's kind of what you want it to do. You'd want that run to be a little bit more like a stream. Ah, see it's starting to stream up a bit. Yeah, now we're getting into the zone. That's what we want. Stream like that, and then it slows down to some drips, and then stream. So maybe I'm getting too hot. Yeah, I'm coming up 144.9, 145. So I'm gonna have to turn my water up a little bit in a minute, because it's starting to run too fast. So maybe we've collected two ounces of water of uh, alcohol so far. This is the stuff that we need to throw away. So keep going with that. I'll let it collect its four ounces and uh, I'm gonna throw it away, but I'll measure it to show you guys the alcohol content in that. But I thought I'd show you, I've got this old jug here that I've written on with a Sharpie, 40% turbo that's drinkable. <laughs> Um, that was the chug that I poured in with the wash. So I wanted to show you guys that this isn't just like a trick. If I take some water, that's hot water, as it's coming out of the still at 140.9, 141 now, and I wipe on that. It comes off a little bit, but it's still there, right? If I take a fresh paper towel and I collect some of this well, four shots, basically, nail polish remover. And I use that. Takes it right off. <laughs> so, that's my bottle label cleaner. So that I can label and keep track of what I got going on. Now, it's all off. <laughs> on that first one. Well, there's some on there from another one that I cleaned, but where I wipe this one, it's very faint. So we must be getting close now. Actually, let me switch out these bottles. And I just do that by lifting this up and pushing it over and putting it in that one. Now we should be close to 60 mil, I think. Oh yeah, we're good. I'm gonna start keeping the rest, I think. Oh, I didn't film that, sorry. So I'm not sure if that is enough liquid to measure. I've got this smaller container. So there's like 65 mils of the four shots. So we'll put that, ooh, don't fall over. Put that down there. And I'll get my proof and trail. Proof, and I think it's not gonna be enough. No, it's sunk. So, I'd need to collect a little bit more, but since I'm gonna keep the rest, I won't be able to measure that. But you can tell since it's sitting on the bottom, I'm already well above, not well above, but, well yeah, well above 
So it's sitting on the bottom at 50%. And even if I shake it, even if I give it a bounce, it doesn't come up. So it's not close to buoyancy. I'm expecting it to be above 80, hopefully close to 90. If it's 95, I'd be surprised. But that's what it says on the box. The still. Yeah, uh, hopefully you can hear me. I'm running the fan for this process. I'll show you guys a trick that an old guy taught me. You can take this a spoon and you collect a few drops of the distillate. And in the olden days, what they used to do is they used to light it on fire. If it blurts, so you see a little bit of yellow on the top of the flame, hopefully it shows up in the camera. That means it still has some bad stuff in it. A fully blue flame means that it's good, clean, only alcohol. So that's a little trick. If I don't know if you guys are ever going to want to still or learn about the process, but that's a little trick for anybody else that might be watching the video that wants to know about uh, how to do this process. Oh, coming up pretty quick. I'm going to turn my water up. I use the spoon technique to continue to measure the drips until I see in a completely blue flame. Then I change jugs. So this is all, I would say we're into the hearts here now. So I added this to the four shots and I forgot to do it on camera. Measured it, it was probably about 87% alcohol. So this I'll keep and I'll add it to the tails. Um, I should get a marker and mark that on there, but I'll do that as soon as we're done here. Um, so I wanna give this a little taste test. So I don't have quite enough to measure it yet. I'll get a couple drips on my finger. Because like I said, when you're making alcohol, you don't want to drink it. You just want to taste it. Oh man, is that ever nice. Oh, that's so much more flavorful than my pot still. It's sweet. A little bit. Not burnt. Nice clean finish on the palate. Oh, this is great. I'm so pumped. I wish I could, I wish I had a different needle valve though, so I could be more like everything about this whole process, it's all being affected, right? Like even the breath coming out of my mouth and coming across the still column is affecting the way with the, te the, the temperature is going. When I walk in here and move air in this area, it changes everything. So I need to have more control of the amount of water. And I don't. And it's frustrating. Because I would rather sit around 140. So I got it to hover around 142. And look at the difference in the run. That's, I don't know if you can see that dripping. 142.5. I'd be careful not to lift the hose above the height of the outtake. Okay, well, that's a lot better. If I can get it to stay around there, I'll be a happier guy. So, I was able to get this to hover at 145, just below, or still at 191. That won't come up until alcohol content in the wash goes down. As the wash goes down, the boiling point of the liquid goes up. And uh, I got a nice run going here. So, I appreciate you watching your video. the video. Uh, I'm going to continue to still this off here and uh, get it done. Oh, uh, I probably got enough liquid there to do a measurement now and give you guys a measurement of the uh, percentage of alcohol. I'll do that before I go. Okay, so here is my distillate deliciousness. Oh, don't want to spill any. Uh, <laughs> I need my bigger one, which means I need more volume. I don't think I have enough volume, but 
still right on the bottom. So that there, just, just letting it sit like that, that's 190. Two, four, six, eight, 192. So it's more than 192 proof. So proofing scale is double the percentage. So 96, 96%. It's more than, oh. Is it just floating? Yeah, it is. It's just floating. Look at that, 96%. Here we go. Now I can't see the meniscus of the liquid. But yeah, if I had to guess, I'd say we're at like 96% exactly. 96% alcohol. So the advertisement on the box was accurate. I'm surprised at that. 96% alcohol for my distillate. That's pretty good. And... As I've already mentioned, it tastes delicious. Oh yeah, I could almost drink it like that, but that put me on the floor pretty quick. So like, for example, I think this was, I know, I think this was $13, but makes 2.25 liters. And then this here was probably $8. And then you can see the markings on the side. So each of those are 750 mils. Uh, what does that work out to? 25. So each one of so each one of these can make three 26ers. That's not bad, in my opinion. And then uh, leads are sometimes four to six dollars for this bottle, but then you need to buy this one as well, which I think is also four to six. This bag, which is also four to six. And then uh, water. Yeah, so I'll, I'll take that 90% or 96% that I've measured. And once this run is done, I'll dilute that down to 40% ABV. Uh, like you would get in any pretty well uh, liquor that you buy, rum or rye. And then you mix in one of those flavorings and you're good to go. All right, guys. Well... Thanks for watching the video. Appreciate you tuning in. Uh, tune in next time. I'll probably be back to making another cabin video. Hope you guys have a great week. And uh, cheers.